Hello everyone and welcome to our live stream about Plague Bearer, our new RPG coming very soon. We'll give more details on that soon. But before we start, um, I'm my name is Elena. I am joined here today by producer Guilherme Goulart and designer Francesco Nepitello. How are both of you? Um, let's start with Guilherme. I'm doing very well, thank you very much. My name is Guilherme Goulart. Hello everyone. I am uh, a lead producer, along with uh, Ricardo Minetti, also joined me on production for Plague Bearer. Um, but I'm also known as a designer, one of the designers for Arcadia Quest, uh, being at Simon for uh, going on nine years now. How oh, about wow. you, Francesco? How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not with the company so for uh, already so much, but I'm yeah, Francesco Nepitello. I'm a game designer from Venice I in Italy. Uh, you might know my name together with Marco Maggi for games like the, the latest, who is Dune War for Arrakis, done with the company, with Simon. Uh, but in the case of role-playing games, could be The One Ring, the, the game on the Lord of the Rings, and, and also Zombicide Chronicles, more connected to, uh, to what we're talking about today. I'm also the, the head of development for RPGs with the company, uh, with a team of, uh, composed of many talented people. And then we will eventually mention some of them. Uh, but you might already know about projects like the Assassin's Creed role-playing game and, and others. Yeah. And when you say the latest is Dune, that is like, very recently. I, I believe it was it was launched at retail last Friday, not even a week ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's super fresh, hot off the oven. And yeah. we can't be... We can't be happier because the game has been uh, absolutely a great success uh, with the with the fans that uh, the backers from the Kickstarter that we did last year have been receiving the game in the last um, couple of months if they were lucky in, in the last weeks if they were less lucky but every, everybody who uh, received it is seems to be really really happy judging from from reviews and comments and everything so. We're very happy that all the, the love that we poured into that creature <laughs> has actually uh, found some some respect, some some love also from the players. Yeah, true. Well, I think it's time we, to start talking about Plague Bearer. I see a few people have joined us already. So what do you guys say we start with a small video? All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. So almost five years at the company, and I finally got to do a video with a jump scare. In it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're very we, we, we needed to have that. We needed to have that because there will be plenty of jump scares in in Plague Bearer. Yeah. Speaking of that, what can you tell us about the universe of Plague Bearer? So this is an RPG, so um, a lot of lore there, if I'm correct. What can you tell us about it? Well, as I think a lot of people might have guessed already, uh, Plug Better is set in the same world that is shared by by Zombicide, the, by the line of games from Zombicide Black Plague. So the medieval setting for, for Zombicide. Um, a game that so have been seen already through a lot of uh, different supplements and expansions for the game, but that is can be summarized as zombie side in the middle ages in in the dark age uh, but there's uh, as we are seeing uh, as you will see by, by reading plug better there's so much more than, than that because as the, the the title of the game says it's a dark fantasy role-playing game so it's not just uh, a game about the black the black plague in a realistic middle age but it's a it's a dark fantasy so there will be a lot more from from 
creatures to 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 type of adventures and this landscape that you're seeing right now depicting a, a bleak uh, environment is just to to give you a taste of that it's going it's a big world a lot of different paths to take but everything is seen under uh, through the lens of a dark uh, of a dark vision and what can you tell us about it Guilherme? What, what I really like about this is those are uh, the opening lines to the quick starter. And we'll talk about more about the quick starter later, but uh, I, I love how it situates your point of view as uh, as this bleak situation where, you know, whether it was um, blight on the crops, whether it was just uh, greedy nobles uh, collecting, people were already uh, used to, uh, to hard life. And then this is the next level of that, right? That's when necromancers come around spreading uh, yet more trouble, yet yet uh, the horrors of this plague. Uh, so I think it, it paints a good uh, a good onset to to you know warrior situated situated in. Yeah, I think that that's a nice uh, it's a nice blend of things. And yes, this image is is even more direct in connecting that because um, I might say there's also a level of dark humor. So the idea that uh, a, a farmer or a, or a peasant in, in the Middle Ages could have uh, seen uh, the, the, the coming of, of uh, undead hordes just as another uh, plague for them, something that uh, is, yeah, possibly worse than, than something that came before, but not, not something that is completely overturning the world for them because they are already used to, to die of cold, die of famine or, or some sickness. And so that's that what makes them heroes, that what makes them survivors. That's the term that we use in the Plug Better uh, role-playing game as we do with Zombicide, because these are people that refuse to, to, to become victims and they just uh, take whatever they can find, any weapon they can find, any combat spell, uh, anything that can help them uh, stay alive and uh, and maybe uh, reclaim something of the world that is being destroy destroyed by by the undead. Um, they know they cannot count on on the king on or or knights in shining armor. They have to do to to, to reclaim whatever they can by themselves. Yeah, I love how one of the ways that even on the onset when we're developing this. Um, we, we, we latch down to this idea that in Plague Bearer, you are a sword wielding, spell casting, zombie killing bastard, right? You're not just someone who's, um, you know, embracing that, uh, that, that words and chaos and you're going to hide, right? You're not just going to survive. It's survivor with the intent that you are sur you're survived uh, out of the own merit, right? Out of your own strength of arms. Uh, it's... Uh, it's one of the ways that we really kind of uh, has really helped us to shape uh, the look and feel and situate who players are in this world, right? Uh, what we're seeing here also, is, uh, I think, cool to, to uh, explain that we are showing a selection of uh, artworks that we've produced uh, for the game, uh, artwork that will be seen on the quick starters, some on the core book, uh, and just to, to uh, help show you a bit behind the curtains before, uh, before the books uh, come to you. Yeah. The art does look incredible. And uh, yeah, as usual, I mean, one of the uh, everybody that knows the company that knows Simon knows that, uh, that we are taking uh, a particular attention to, to the graphic presentation of the games and the graphic presentation of the worlds that the games are set in. And, and in the case of Plug Bear, it doesn't make a difference. It, it's the same. We are trying to, to uh, capture the spirit. And also in this case, you can exactly see that. We're, we're talking about a survivor that she's not a princess. She's not uh, a knight. Uh, she's probably some common people uh, that is using whatever she has in her uh, vicinity to, to, fight, to fight the dead. And so the art is balancing this sort of uh, of mood where we have uh, moments where, of course, you're going to 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 just crack jokes and and maybe quote some Monty Python <laughs> uh, <laughs> part, and 
and other moments where you will be uh, instead uh, conjuring this this mood of uh, a real dark fantasy gothic horror type of game. Um, I see a question here that I think is interesting. Um, I won't be able today to show the questions on screen, but I'll read them aloud and you can follow along. Um, will it be compatible with all survivors in the game? So, Guilherme, can you talk more about that? I'll answer with a yes and in the sense that the game will bring a new roster of characters. Uh, if you're playing on the quick starter, there will be a roster of uh, pre-generated characters to ease your... Uh, your, your table into the game as fast as possible. But this being a tabletop role-playing game, that means that uh, you'll be able to take character sheets. Uh, we'll see a preview of that uh, later down in this presentation. But you'll be able to take your favorite characters from the existing uh, series of games and just make sheets and play with them uh, using your miniatures, using as much as you'd like from your collection. So it's, it's yes, you can create uh, your sheets for them just as you would any other character. They can serve as base for inspiration. And there will be new faces to meet in this game. Okay, and finally, here it is. Plague Bearer, the book. So you've introduced us to this whole setting and the lore and the major themes. But on the RPG aspect of this, how is it played? How close is it to Zombicide Chronicles, for example, the modern Zombicide RPG that we have? Can you talk more about that, Francesco? Yes, uh, Black Better it can be considered to have a game system that is Chronicles 2.0. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a new iteration of, of a game system that we previewed in Zombies Z Chronicles at the time, but uh, it has evolved. Uh, it has changed uh, for two reasons. One, because we're talking about uh, a medieval setting, and it's not the same as as the, the as, a, as a modern setting. Uh, there's no uh, automatic weapons and, and stuff like that, so it's different. And also, uh, the mood needed to be different. We didn't want to just play the same game with costumes. Uh, we wanted to we wanted Black Better to be different in uh, and have its own strengths. Uh, also, our point of view, the second point is that our point of view from the last time that we, we tackled the game connected to, to a Zombicide IP uh, has changed and we leaned more on the RPG aspect. I mean that where with Zombicide Chronicles we tried to stay very close from the point of view of the game mechanics to, to the original uh, Zombicide board game mechanics. With Plug Better, we uh, decided to uh, keep the spirit, of course, and there are many similarities, so the game system will be familiar to, to players of both Zombicide board games and Zombicide Chronicles, the role-playing game, but the, the, we, are, we have made modifications and streamlined the system in a way that accommodates for faster and more exciting uh, game sessions when you play in a, a role-playing game. So. Yes, we want this game to be liked by the by the Zombicide fans out there, of course, as we do when we create stuff like comic books and novels based on the on the same IP. But at the same time, we we know that that's a different media. This is a role playing game, and it needs to to have its own strength. So, we're really happy how these two um, reasons for changing Chronicle the Chronicle system has have made the new system a better one. Another thing I think is worth pointing out in that um, question of comparison between uh, Chronicles modern setting and this is um, even that mock-up that we see on screen right now is uh, is just a mock-up, of course, right? It's not indicative of the size of the book because this book is actually going to be bigger than the modern-day uh, counterpart in the sense that uh, not only there are rules um, as we had before, but the setting in Plague Bearer is more fleshed out. Whereas when you're playing Zombicide Chronicles, you play in the city, which you're allowed to uh, use your own life experience and kind of create your neighborhoods and whatnot. In Plague Bearer, there is a more dedicated uh, development of the, of the setting, which takes place in the Duchy of Wolfsburg. Uh, players from Zombicide Black Plague may recognize that as one of the uh, mainstays from the board game series. Um, so there is that too. There is that aspect where this game has uh, mechanical evolutions, but also a more fleshed out setting uh, that's created for this. 
Yes, uh, we uh, we had Umberto Pignatelli, who's a, uh, a very prolific writer for uh, role play games. You might know him for Beasts and Barbarians, uh, and, and also for for his work on Trudvan, our board game. Uh, but he's a veteran role player and role player writer and and uh, adventure game books writer, and he has created uh, a full world out of the Duchy of Wolfsburg with, with cities, villages, and monsters, and adventures. And um, we have a whole line of things from, from the core. Well, we will go into it later on, but uh, we have already a lot of adventures that will allow you to play a full campaign, actually more than one full campaign in the world of Plague Bearer. So we are really going in deep in, into the detail of the, of the world that originated with so beside Black Plague. Yeah. Um, I see a few questions that I think maybe we can address before we move forward. Um, why did you change the name from Dark Age Chronicles to Plague Bearer? Just curious. It, it's, I, I would say that it's interesting how far the uh, placeholder name Dark Age Chronicles made in, into the process. Uh, so for us, it was intended as uh, we knew that this was um, the next spin into the Zombicide Chronicles, and Dark Age is in a way, the where we're setting this, right? In the sense that it's a medieval world in the grip of a zombie apocalypse. Um, but as time went by, we felt more and more drifted into the concept of having its own, uh, more individuality, more own um, name for what the game is. And of course, even what we see here in terms of uh, cover and branding isn't final, right? Uh, so Zombicide Chronicles very much is the system of the game. But Plague Bearer becomes its uh, its own individual entry into the series. Um, another interesting question that I think we can answer while we take a look at the next. Oh no, I got it wrong. Okay, we'll take the next question, next question afterwards. Okay. Here's the fantasy line, and of course, people are asking, "How does this fit? How does this?" Actually, we can take that question now. I think it connects well. How much will magic play a role in the game? Will there be any hybrid animal rules to pull in the roster from White Death, which we can see at the far right? Mm -hmm. So how how can it connect to the board games? Um, well, right now, uh, okay. So uh, right now, you can consider these three uh, boxes as um the first one can be considered the now of the black plague world the the, the, the plague battered world uh, where green horde and white death can be seen as the the near future and the, and the more distant future for for the evolution of the game uh, so so far you can expect to find inside black batter uh, elements of of the first iteration of zombicide black plague so we are not going to to distant uh, lands like uh, you've seen in White Death. They are there. We have a big map where everything is considered. All the different, all the different uh, board games, are, where the different board games are set. But uh, we know from experience that uh, it is better to start small. Uh, also, from for the from the point of view of the players, it's it's uh, much easier to get into the mood and to 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 really have a feel for the world if you start from a small area. Uh, it's not a small area as in Zombie Side Chronicles, where it's a city, even if it's a big city. Uh, in this case, we have an entire duchy, but if the duchy is part of a, of a bigger kingdom, and the kingdom is part of a bigger realm, and the realm is just one of many realms inside a continent. And so there's a lot of uh, plenty of opportunities for expansion in the future. So for the moment, uh, to just answer the specific question, the different uh, the the hybrid animals is actually up to you because the choice for a character race uh, is hasn't so far a mechanical effect on the character so you can just uh, explain tell to the game master that oh i want to play a hybrid tiger or whatever uh, you'd like to play and that's it it, it doesn't need uh, uh, a mechanical feature to, to be included in the game we will possibly do that as the game is successful and expands. We can go into more detail about uh, player options. 
And thus, we just learned here live that uh, Francesco's favorite animal is a tiger. <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, and the first part of the question, I know it was a two-part question, and I know, I know I'm not showing it on screen. So how much will magic play a role in the game? Um, who of you can answer that one? Maybe Francesco, I guess? Yeah, I think Francesco is even a bit more suited because not only um, he's the author of the content along with Umberto and the team, but he's being, uh, he has an active group playing now, right now. <laughs> and we have this beautiful yeah, sorry, but with I, some magic. I missed, <laughs> but I missed, the, I missed the, 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 the question, Elena, sorry. Um, how much will magic play a role in the game? Ah, okay, okay. Well, a lot, uh, because <laughs> uh, as the definition of the game dark fantasy role-playing uh, shows, and also the image is quite self-explanatory. Uh, magic is available to, to, to characters um, uh, more or less in the same way weapons are available. Uh, so combat spells are easy to find and, and, and they are not difficult to use, uh, very effective. Uh, there are some characters that are more um, fit to, to use magic than others because the game is, let's say, skill-based. There, there's actions that you can do in a better way or you can be more proficient in one field than another. And so some characters will be more proficient in magic. Uh, but also magic is behind all of it because the Scourge, the, the Black Plague, uh, I don't think we're going to spoil too much by saying that there is more than just a, a, an epidemic behind the Black Plague in Plague Bearer. We're not talking about simply um, a, a malady or a sickness. We're talking about something that is necromantic, is sorcerous in nature. So the, the, the whole thing is magical in nature. And so adversaries will be uh, often uh, wielding uh, magical forces against you. So it will be as important to, to be able to use magic against them as it will be for you to defend uh, from their black magic. Okay, another cool question here. Uh, this one, I think, for Guilherme. How are decisions made? What is the system? D20, D6, or, or, or other? So in that sense, um, the game has a, a, a traditional tabletop role-playing structure where you have one player playing as the narrator, who is, of course, encouraged not just to play against players, but with your players, creating a cool story. Um, and you have a number of players uh, to, to, to take part as the adventurers, uh, as the survivors in the story. The game uses D6s, uh, as we've used in Zombicide Chronicles before. Um, and you, you encourage your, the, the dynamic of the group is to roll dice whenever the outcome of a, something you're attempting is uncertain, right? So you do roll a number of D6s uh, that are informed by your statistic, sorry, statistics as well as any uh, relevant circumstances. And from that pool of results, you're trying to find out how well or how uh, mad did your, did your uh, result of your, your action is, right? Yeah. Um, is there another question I'm picking from the comments? Is there an optimal number of players, or maybe a rules for, or maybe rules for solo play? Um, who can answer this one? I think you dare me. Yeah, you're the No, I think, I no, I think you can. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, the number of players around the table is very much just like in any role-playing game where you can, it, it depends on how many the, the GM can actually handle. Uh, there's no specific, there are no specific rules that will limit that number. Uh, and also the, the, for example, the, the difficulty of things to do, uh, it, it scales pretty well with, with more players because uh, the, the, the number of enemies that you can find and their strength depends often scales with the, with the size of the party of, of survivors. But the, um, about solo play, we are actually, uh, doing that. We are developing, um, a system to play to play with just one player because we've seen that 
uh, against all all, all uh, expectations, at least for me, it seems that solo play is becoming more and more uh, not necessarily a necessity, not, but, but uh, just a good addition to 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 the to the arsenal of a role playing game to be able also to sit down and create your own story by yourself. Cool. Um, um, I'm not sure if it, now is the time to ask more about that because I'm intrigued personally. Is it a GM and one player, or really a single person? <laughs> There is actually a new type of gaming that has, has surfaced in in, the, in recent times, uh, where you play by yourself. I mean, it's just one player, where you are being at the same time the GM and uh, and the player, and basically uh, <laughs> you're asking questions to yourself, and there are game mechanics that can prompt you answers, and. I, for example, by, uh, I found it very uh, interesting from the point of view as a GM, I'm mainly the GM in my group, uh, I found it very interesting to, to flesh out adventure ideas, to, to come up with adventure ideas that I could then later present to my players. But uh, there's been some really clever game designers that created these, these oracles, these, these tables that you use exactly to do that, to have a prompt. Uh, okay, I'm opening uh, uh, an undiscovered tomb. What I'm going to find inside? You roll dice on tables, and you and you have answers very diversified based on different elements, different uh, different uh, contingencies, and you get uh, a prompt that is easy to flesh out with your own mind. So you're telling yourself a story, but starting from from uh, from a point of, from a good point of view, from from a good uh, starting point. And so it seems that a lot of players are enjoying that. For example, we have it for, for the One Ring. It's called the Strider Mode. And, and we will have that sooner or later with Plague Bearer. Oh. Anything to add there, Guilherme? Uh, not for me. I was actually remembering the Strider Mode. Uh, I've been playing the One Ring with my group. And two things that you mentioned are super fun, right? The, the, the structure of how uh, Strider Mode engages you as a player with the tables and with the narrative. But I also like the idea that uh, just like we do the Duce of Wolfsburg at your beginning, uh, so it's a it's a defined canvas sort of space that you can uh, expand as you go. The one ring starts everyone in the Shire. We're all hobbits and it, you kind of get to experience the world little by little. I think some of those uh, some of those like modern um, touches that uh, Francesco and team have already uh, designed and are bringing to play better are uh, very, very interesting mechanics. Okay. Moving forward then, here we can see a character and what I assume is an undead unicorn. Yeah, it's a cute <laughs> unicorn. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so um, our, our idea with uh, just showing even the previous image where heroes are surrounded by this uh, mob, a huge mob of, of undead, and this slide as well is um, to convey a bit of the look and feel of uh, the situations you'll encounter, uh, what do the people in this world look like, and the enemies. Uh, also important to say that Wild Plague Bearer is a word um, in the grip of a zombie apocalypse, and there's uh, undead everywhere. There's undeads of various shapes and kinds. Um, so what we, we've shown here one piece uh, of, uh, of one enemy. There are many that we're developing, of course, to flesh out their stories. Uh, I was I was very selectively trying to to decide how much is too much. Should I show this? Should I show this big piece? Should I not? Uh, just just to touch a bit on uh, look and feel of what characters and um, and their enemies look like. I think uh, we also have a prototype, a work in progress character sheet, just to show a bit of how that. Yes, thank you. How that uh, kind of translates itself to the uh, to the game. What we're seeing here is uh, Rowena. That's one of the pre-gen characters that will be in the quick start um, that we will release uh, for free when the pre-order launches. Uh, she is also the, the character you see. Uh, you might you might have spotted her on the main image of the cover, uh, mm -hmm. and she play, she was a she used to be an executioner. Very um dedicated uh kind of uh strong and silent type uh so she has a very pragmatic approach now that the word is uh, taken by the undead 
Um, there is a question. Yes, about probably. Sorry, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Before afterwards, I will take the question. Okay, I was saying that maybe uh, Zombicide Chronicle players can see from from the the work in progress character sheet that uh, the, the the game system is uh, of course not so far away because the the action matrix is the same, and um, but there's a, a lot more, uh, especially uh, from the point of view of how the uh, the mechanics have been streamlined. And and also well and also the graphic approach will be a little different. This is one stage already behind when we are now, but of course we have to show something. <laughs> and 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 yes, and and just and the other thing, Rowena is an executioner, and the executioner is one out of twelve different occupations that you can choose in the core game. Uh, so uh, she's an example of the executioner type of. Uh, of character that is one of the two out of 12 character types that are more uh, prone to, to resolve problems with violence. <laughs> uh, there is a question that connects to that, actually, the one I was going to pick before. Is the archetype system from Chronicles being changed for the setting or is it staying relatively the same? So if you can actually, if you can start by recapping what the archetype system is for maybe people who aren't familiar with Chronicles. <laughs> Francesco, I think. Well, maybe. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the the archetype system in Zombicide Chronicles is very similar to the one that we have in Plague Better. We still call them archetypes, but the uh, system for Plague Better is a bit more stringent, is a bit tighter compared to, to what was in Zombicide Chronicles. In Chronicles, we were trying to uh, I mean, the, the character creation process was very, very simple. And it was to, to get you on the action right away. And also we were more um, pushing you, since it's a modern type of game, uh, it's not so easy to, to think about classes uh, in, a, in a modern world. So it was more about what kind of character you want to be? Do you want to be like this skater guy or this one using the, 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 the BMX bike and so on? So in the case of a, of a fantasy game, it was easier to, to create a number of almost classes. So there's more, uh, there are more characteristics, more features in, um, in the character types in Plague Bearers. So uh, it, the choice for the archetype is going to shape more uh, the character you have at the end of character creation. It's still, it is still very easy. Uh, it is still very much about starting to play immediately and build your character as you go on. Uh, but uh, yes, there, there's more. If you are going to play an, an apprentice sorcerer, for example, an apprentice magician, it's going to be quite different than uh, being a farmer, like a peasant. So. Uh, and every every character type, of course, has its own strengths and weaknesses, but uh, they're going to shape the way you play the game uh, more definitely than than before. Yeah. Anything to add there, Guilherme? Uh, I actually actually was wondering uh, if uh, is there a Rowena being played in your group, Francesco? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of my play tests, uh, the first play test I, I ran was uh, using the pre-generated characters. Yeah. Uh, so we played the, for example, we played the adventure that is going to be in the quick start. Again, a story by, by Umberto Pignatelli that is called Blood and Wine. And, um, and it's a very dangerous adventure, by the way. And <laughs> yes, we played the pre-gen, so we had an executioner and we had Rowena. Uh, after that that cycle of play tests, we started play testing the archetypes. So we I let I I had more uh, freedom uh, with my players in letting them choose whatever they wanted. But in my most recent one last night, <laughs> we have an executioner, a male executioner in this case. But yes, we have an executioner, cool. and we have a I think. Uh, yeah, executioner, another guy who's a miner, and yeah, four characters out of twelve. So, that yeah, I I, I think not nothing much you had from my end other than uh, play, uh, players who play Zombicide Chronicles uh, may already know that we have a uh, survivor generator uh, online. Uh, we do plan, of course, on making one for Plague Bearer. Um, 
on a similar structure. We want to keep everything that works. But just as Francesco said, there's a bit more uh, to it when it comes to character creation uh, in, in Plague Bear as compared to Chronicles. We also, I think the next image here is very cool. I think everyone will find it very cool because if we talked about the characters. Now I think it's time to talk about the town. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, um, old time fans will notice that this is the city of Wolfsburg. Indeed. <laughs> so this is a beautiful uh, map artwork by uh, Francesca Barald, who's also collaborating with us with a number of maps for the game. And this is, you know, this project is also an amazing opportunity to flesh out more of the setting. So exactly. Whereas Wolfsburg before was uh, explored and visited in the board game setting. Now we get to flesh out its corners, its denizens, uh, what lies in, oh, I'm wondering how much I'm going into spoilers, what lies in the dark corners of the city. Uh, it all becomes a great stage, a great setting uh, for storytelling. Yeah, so, there's a lot there. Uh, uh, there's a lot to the city of Wolfsburg and more than meets the eye because the, uh, I mean, just a little bit of spoiling here, but uh, we we have the city above and we have also the city below. So uh, it's and and yeah, it's going to be fun to see how how uh, players will will approach the 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 type of adventures we have, quests, we call them, uh, and they were missions in Zombie Side Chronicles, and how lethal they will find them, uh, if they will survive, or if they will have a big turnover of characters <laughs> by getting killed quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Th this, just by itself, I could just have framed in the office. This, this is amazing. I mean, you still can. <laughs> There's time. Yeah. So how how I'm not sure if we want to go into too many details now, but how specific is the map in terms of of gameplay? Like, is this here for inspiration, or do you expect players to go down these small streets and alleys with you and have the map in your head and know what corners of the city have what and things like that? I think there's, well, there's more than one angle to this, right? One of them, yeah. of course, is that uh, the the map, along with uh, descriptions, are present in the book. So uh, the narrator can, of course, get acquainted and use that as much as they'd like in their description, in their you know painting of the scene for players. But uh, of course, it'll also be printed inside the book. That's one cool idea also to show. Um, but of course, we have plans also making uh, props, right, into translating some of these into handouts, into, into just uh, materials you can have on the table to help. Now, interestingly enough, like we saw two slides ago, the, like the city of Wolfsburg, and then the next slide zooms in into a corner of not the city, but a, a place in the, in the introductory adventure in Blood and Wine. And this is all just to show that uh, kind of going with what you're saying, sometimes we're looking at a more of a bird's eye view into uh, a, a part of the kingdom. Sometimes we're looking at a very specific place. Uh, and then the next slide, if you can uh, go one more forward, just to show a bit of how those are connected and presented in the in the, in the materials, right? You have uh, page renderings of, of the maps, and then you have, of course, the corresponding keys with relevant information for the narrators. Uh, from there, you know, uh, each table, we, just like within the RPGs, uh, they can use that as description to paint the scene for players. They can uh, print out, they can have access to, uh, uh, to just furnish the, the scene for players. And there is one thing I'd like to add about the, the specific question you said, uh, if players are going to play alley by alley using the, the city map, or if it's going to be more inspirational. Actually, the map that the city is fully described in text so all the parts of the district districts uh, that you see on in uh, in the city map are actually uh, detailed someplace but uh, just to to tell you something about uh, the the craziness of of the people we're working with because if you go back to the city map uh, you can see that there's a lot of uh, of houses very very detailed there and 
uh, when we had to to make yeah when we had to make some zoomed in maps uh, of those parts, uh, the artist that made the zoomed in maps that is Nicola Fructus actually replicated the the buildings that you see on the main map so it's not inspirational it's it's really <laughs> um, topographical so uh, you can compare the zoomed in maps of the city and the general map and they fit so uh, and that was not even uh, something that we asked him to do it was something that it just was natural by looking at the fantastic job that Francesca Varel has done with the city map and he couldn't uh, just say okay but that's just something to have a reference that one quarter is here the other one is here and the, and the duke's palace is up there no i want to i will exactly use these this map to to make my own as a blown up version of it so yeah it's going to be really nice to to and and we did it with, with the play test for example for for one of the starter adventures where you can actually track your uh progress on the map as you do things that I won't say now what you're going to do, but yes, you will <laughs> you will find it easy to track your progress on the map. <laughs> one one fun turn in that is that uh, the the more uh, time we spent working on this project, uh, things like that, that level of nuance and detail right, and care that people uh, put on, uh, I for just and I end up finding out how much of a role player uh, role play gamer. Nicolazis. I had no idea. We were talking to him, just talking about the maps and the creation of this world. And like, there's always a lot of creative uh, back and forth. And then he was describing how he's playing two regular tables. And one of them, he's creating maps on the fly. And then he understands like exactly what we're talking about, about making versions of maps for the player's eyes and things that only the narrator can see. Uh, and Nicolás is just one example, right? Uh, Francesco is full play testing this game and running campaigns. I'm playing campaigns with the people in the office as well. Uh, it, it's just so much fun to see uh, like a, a team that's talented but also loves uh, the tabletop role playing to its core. Yeah, true. <laughs> I already see a question asking for a super duper resolution <laughs> version of this map. Um, that we will enlarge to the scale of the original maps. Wow, that would be indeed huge. I'm not sure we. I'm not sure that's feasible. Uh, just paint the side of the office, right? With this. Yeah, let's <laughs> just paint a whole wall at this point. Let's go with a hard maybe. <laughs> Um, I, I were probably going to the last bit of this okay. live stream. So if you guys have questions, make sure to drop them in the comments. Um, I see one here. What is the maximum player character level? Oh, that's an interesting one. Francesco, do you have an answer to that? Is there an, an, uh, a max level? Yeah, yeah. so far we have we have an, adva an advancement um we have eight advancement levels like in Soviet Chronicles. So uh, it's it what we consider to be geared at a medium campaign. So not for uh, super long campaigns, uh, but still is a game that is playable at a high level. I mean, meaning where you're six, seven or eight levels, it's not simply, they are not simply there just to put a, a, a top somewhere but you can actually play the characters where, when you are so, because you won't be so overpowered that it's going to just stop being fun and challenging. So yeah, eight levels. And by the time you get there, you will have so many uh, advancements and, and changes to your character that it will be probably a one man army, but not so uh, overpowered to, to, to be able to defeat all the nasty critters we have in the world of black banner okay. another cool question here i think this one's for guilherme are there any plans to bring chronicles and plague bearer to foundry vtt virtual tabletop or any other platform we do have plans uh not not solid enough that we can disclose exactly platforms at this point but we do have plans and uh we'll def you'll definitely hear from us when uh, by the time that the pre-order launches but yes there, there are plans to make available packages to ease people into uh, vtt uh, i myself uh, had before the pandemic lost connection uh with just regular play 
and uh, just being able to play online back in 2020 was what also I think rekindled a lot of people's uh, passion. Just being able to sit remotely and play together. I think so. I think it's 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 here to stay since then. Yeah, true. Okay, um, our final question before we go to to where can I get this? Um, are there going to be loads of little Easter eggs or references sprinkled here and there? And can you share your favorite one since it's near Easter? I think this is a very sweet way to put this request. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's the question. Okay, favorite is Easter egg. I assume you probably have to think it over. Do you, any of you have it top of your head? I have to say, I think the the city of Wolfsburg itself is sort of an Easter egg because this was an expansion for Black Plague, if I'm not wrong. Maybe Green Horde? I think Black Plague. Black Plague. It was an Black expansion Plague, for, yes. for, for, for a game, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, so, yeah. I, I will... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Francesco. You first. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'll, I'll buy you some time. Um, <laughs> I would say that the question itself is um, suggestive because there are bunny-related monstrosities in Black Plague. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> there are some <laughs> rabbit-related uh, oh, yeah. abominations. Yeah. So I'll, 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 yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll make that my comment. Yeah, yeah, that, that surprised. I, I, I heard rabbit first, so I was a bit confused. <laughs> <laughs> That's Okay. In my case, I just can say that uh, there there's going to be plenty of uh, Easter eggs there because uh, Umberto likes that to hide stuff in in his world building, and uh, you're going to get that type of references not just from the world of of Black Black Zombicide, but from the entire background that Umberto has with fantasy gaming in general. For example, he's an avid uh, choose your own adventure writer and fan. And so you're probably going to find the references to fighting fantasy game books from, from the eighties and nineties in the, in the UK and, and, and old RPGs because I already spotted a few and I'm sure there's, much more there than, than what I actually was able to recognize. Fair enough. Okay, so finally, where can people get this? And we do have a whole slide just for that. So where and how and when? Tell us everything, you let me. Okay, so Plague Bear will be uh, launched through a pre-order uh, on GameFound. That's going to be launching in May. Uh, but today uh, marks a day where we're publishing the preview page. So the link to the preview page will be in the chat uh, momentarily. Uh, you all, whoever has an interest in this game, you all can click there and uh, click to be uh, follow, which basically generates a notification for when you launch the campaign. Uh, some of the highlights that we put there on the slide, of course, we don't want to get too much into it uh, now, but... Uh, some of the things you can expect that if you participate in the pre-order, you will get early access to the game. So you will get to see digital version of the files ahead of uh, printed publication. Um, so that's already a, a sneak peek into where we're still uh, close to publication, but not yet there yet. Um, there will be options if you want to choose only digital PDFs. Uh, that's, that's fine. That's an option just for that. Uh, there are, of course, more than one option to get physical product. Uh, there's a range, as I mentioned before, briefly. Uh, we're, of course, working on some accessories, some cool things to furnish your table. Um, and whichever level, if you decide to opt for physical products, no matter what level you get into, you also get all the PDFs as part of participating in the pre-order. And then you can see there are a few things. We discussed maps, and I talked about framing them and whatnot. So. Uh, you guys can too, if that is something that interests you. Uh, there will be options where you get printed maps. Uh, we discussed a bit on the solo module. There will be an option where you can get a printed copy of that as well. Uh, otherwise, solo module will be more of a digital reward, unless you know, outside of the scope of the pre-order, just like the maps. Uh, there will be deluxe, you know, uh, hard cardboard, nice narrator screens there. 
and other things that we'll put there. But yeah, just to summarize, this will be on GameFound in May, um, and you can click now on the preview page to follow and be notified when it launches. Yeah, the, you can find the link in the comments. I'm not sure if it will be on the right or down below, but either way, link is there, follow the campaign. And I think that's it for today, if I'm not mistaken. Any final words you'd like to say to our audience before we wrap this up? I see two questions that arrived in a row okay. asking about miniatures. Of, oh, course. of course. I think it I think it took a while <laughs> for this question, this inevitable question to show up. Yep. So what can you tell us about miniatures? Do we have miniatures I mean, or we not? Of course, it's something that's on our minds as well. Um, I think uh, for the context of the pre-order, this is it's a project being developed and designed as a tabletop role-playing game, where in, in this particular system, um, as, at least on the core book and in starter sets, mi miniatures are not required to play. So on the context of the pre-order itself, uh, we don't expect to offer plastic miniatures. Uh, as I mentioned, there will be a, a range of accessories that are crafted and designed for the for the RPG. However, that doesn't, of course, uh, exclude the possibility that we can make uh, products later where you get plastic figures for either the monsters or survivors you see here uh, that can cross over to board game. But that falls more in the realm of uh, maybe we'll get there. We'll see, of course, how the game goes, how the uh, reaction to, to, to this take is. Uh, but not for the content of pre-order. So maybe, maybe in the future, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I could... I could add that uh, where, um, I mean, everything that we decided, everything, every feature for this project from the title to, to the content has been done exactly to, to push uh, what is a tabletop role-playing game project. So it's not a crossover, it's not a board game. It's something that is um, very much uh, like our, card for to present the studio the, the guillotine press studio where we develop a role-playing game for for simon and so uh, that's our main business that's our core business we do role-playing games uh, then uh, this doesn't mean that if you're a fan of black flag zombie side you're not going to find something that you like because of course the ip is the same and and of course if you have boxes of of zombie side black flag in your home it's going to be so easy and convenient for you to, to take out miniatures and tiles from the board game to use them in the role-playing game, even if you're not going to use them in the same way that you use them in the board game. But it's something that we are doing all the time with the playtest. We're using the miniatures and, and, and tiles whenever the occasion presents itself in combat and so on, because it's so easy. And of course, to, to have your choose your characters among the dozens of survivors uh, that have been produced for for the board game so yes in the future there might be space for there might be room for crossovers but so far it's very much all about uh, creating uh, the best role-playing game experience we can uh, in a dark fantasy world and and with the added bonus that if you already have a sizable collection right of zombie side just like in chronicles you absolutely can make use of the tiles of your figures of even the uh, equipment cards in the case of chronicles uh, to facilitate uh, narrative if that's what your group likes you know rpgs are very much like that where some groups will just play entirely theory of their mind some other groups like more tactical um, so if you already own a collection of some side products you absolutely can use them they will be perfect uh, for storytelling in that manner if your table likes to play that way yeah okay perfect then i guess that's what we have for today any final words before we say goodbye to our audience um let's see francesco <laughs> parting parting words um yes. I didn't think about it, sorry, but uh, let me just say that uh, whether you're, you're a fan of Zombicide Black Plague or you're into the darker side of fantasy role-playing, you're going to find a lot to like in Plague Vader. And 
Uh, I think that you will appreciate, uh, compared to other type of role-playing games, what I think is the main feature of our Chronicle system, that is the uh, the fact that you're getting a good, uh, like a fast reward when you play the game, because you your characters develop powerful abilities in a short time through what was adrenaline in, in Chronicles that is called Fervor in, in Plague Bear. So it's something that is going to, to to be a different type of pace. So I hope you're going to tune in with the quick starter and have a taste of what's to come. And of course, be sure that the core uh, game will have more than what you find in, in the quick starter. Yeah. What about you, Guilherme? I will cheat. I have two uh, final thoughts. <laughs> the I'll allow one... that Thank <laughs> this <you>. time. <laughs> <laughs> the first one I think uh, is that the I, what I find the most unique about this is the blend of dark fantasy, right? It's uh, uh, what we mean by it is fantasy in the sense that it's larger than life and very adventure driven, but also that it's not just uh, adventure uh, fantasy in a generic word. This is a word taken by a horror, horrific scenario, right? So I love that the, the mix of uh, uh, that plague barrier. I think is pretty unique that it brings to the table. I hope you all will enjoy it too. And the second one is that uh, uh, the preview page that we have for the uh, for the pre-order is something that we plan on adding to it as the, the days go by. Uh, of course, not in a super frequent way, but we'll be adding and um, building to it uh, as we go, uh, showing more in these days leading up to the launch in May. So stay tuned. We'll be showing more. This is just uh, just the very first milestone, I guess, uh, and we plan to show a lot more to you guys. Well, and with that, was that both of them? Did I cover the, the two? Yes. So with that, thank you all for joining us. I hope you'll follow the page for Playbearer and see everything that we unveil there as the weeks go by before campaign launches. And hope to see you all soon. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.